Good morning, everyone. This is Sonia Liebendorfer here. I wanted to talk to you today about a specific kind of chest pain that people don't normally talk about. And it has to do with something that's called a coronary vasospasm. And even though this is something that is fairly common, people just don't know about it, and it's something that's not talked about, so I wanted to take some time today to explain this to you because there is something that's very easy that can be done if you know someone that has this kind of chest pain as far as an intervention and it's very important that they have it on hand. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, there's some things that I want to go over, and if this has happened to you or happened to a family member or happened to a friend, someone that you know, then I definitely want you to share this information with them because it is of utmost importance to them as, in far, as far as their health. So I want to know, first of all, how many people have had a problem with this because it is something that you don't run into that often, but it is something that is a definite problem and is treated kind of like a heart attack when it happens. So I want to know how many people out there have had a heart catheterization. And when they got done with the heart cath, they told you, that your arteries were clean, that there's no sign of a blockage, or maybe they told you that your coronary arteries were larger than most people's. If you've heard those two things, either one of those or both of those, then you may be at risk for this particular condition. Now, did you know that the symptoms are the same as someone who is having a heart attack. And that is why it is so hard to distinguish. Now, do you know how to treat it and how that's different from a heart attack? We're going to go into all of that. But first of all, we need to define a couple of terms, what the coronary arteries are and what exactly a vasospasm is. So we're going to do that first, and then we're going to get down into the nitty-gritty of answering these questions, okay? All right, the first thing that you need to understand is the coronary arteries. What are we talking about? We're talking about the vessels that supply the oxygen and the nutrients to the heart muscle itself. You see in this picture down below, you see the right coronary artery goes around the right side of the heart, and then there is a left main coronary artery that supplies the blood flow to the left side of the heart. Now, as you go down, the circumflex will actually circle around it. That's why they call it the circumflex. And then you also see the left anterior descending that's the one they call the widow maker when it becomes blocked because it cuts off a large part of the heart muscle once that blockage is there because just below it is a huge area where the vessels branch off. So once that area becomes blocked, it can cause a lot of problems for everything below that in terms of all of these branching offs that take blood and nutrients to the rest of the heart. Now when they talk about this vasospasm, what are they talking about? Now that is when a blood vessel will clamp shut or close to shut without warning and then it reopens after a period of time. The problem is where this occurs. Because, as you can see in that second picture, if it occurs in an area where there is a plaque buildup, then when it reopens, one of those plaques can become loose. And then when it reopens up, it can actually occlude the vessel and result in a heart attack. Now, the 
problem is how long does it remain shut? That's the key. We need to reopen this vessel as quickly as possible. And we're going to go into how to do that. But let's talk about this spasming because it is something that has to do with the vessel size more than anything else in these situations. And it's because these vessels, because they're larger, they're more prone to spasm than regular coronary arteries in someone that does not have large vessels of this size. So what if you had a heart cath and you were told that you didn't have a blockage, that your vessels were clear? Well, you may have this condition and it just didn't show up because it resolved by the time they actually went in there and looked at, at things. It feels exactly like a heart attack because the blood vessel clamps closed and everything below that spot starts hurting because it's oxygen deprived. And it's the oxygen deprivation that causes chest pain. It's your body's way of telling you, hey, something's wrong. You need to look at this. Because that chest pain is something that's not to be ignored. Now, it's also easily confused with gastroesophageal reflux, which is caused by buildup of acid that goes and refluxes back into the esophagus. That causes an extreme amount of pain too. And normally they have to do a process of elimination to figure out if it is the heart muscle causing the problem or if it is the stomach causing the problem. Have you had a heart cath and your cardiologist told you that your coronary arteries were larger than most people's? Because these vessels are the ones that are prone to spasm. And they don't know why it occurs in people with larger vessels. They just know that it does occur in people that have larger vessels. So while the people with smaller vessels are mo more prone to blockages and occlusions and things of that sort, people with larger vessels are prone to the vasospasms. So you know that the symptoms are the same as a heart attack. So let's review those symptoms because not all of them have to be present. It depends on where the actual spasm is occurring in the vessel of the heart. You can have pain in, or pressure in the chest from lack of oxygen. Your body's trying to tell you there's a problem. It can move to your left arm. It can move into your neck. It can move until the back of your left shoulder and then into the mid back. It can move into your jaw, but time is of the essence with this because you have to get to a hospital so they can treat you because you don't know why this happened. You don't know what made it spasm, but they need to give you the proper treatment so they can get that vessel open. And I'm going to talk about that because what they give you in the hospital, you need to also have on hand if you have this as a medical condition so you can treat yourself before even going to the hospital. And if this is the problem, the nitroglycerin will relieve your pain. So how do you treat it? The same as you do for a heart attack, and I'm going to explain why. You have to have nitroglycerin to open that vessel up because what nitroglycerin does is it basically forces a vessel to open and allow blood flow. 
Now it makes the vessel relax. Now with the opening of the vessel, the pain should be relieved. If the pain comes back, it needs to be investigated for something further going on because if a vasospasm occurs where there is a plaque buildup in the vessel, when that vasospasm is relieved, it can cause a plaque to break off. And then you have a full-blown heart attack with all of the blood supply being cut off from that point below in the heart. And time is muscle. So you don't want to mess around if you have to take a nitro and find out whether or not you're having a heart attack or not. If the pain comes back, you're continuing to have a problem, and you need to go to the hospital. If you go to the hospital and you have a heart catheterization, they tell you that it's clear. They tell you that you have no blockages. They tell you that your vessels are larger than most people's and you're prone to this condition, the way they treat it is they are going to give you a prescription for nitroglycerin. So whenever you have episodes of chest pain, just like a person who has a blockage in their heart, you will take a nitroglycerin to open that vessel up. That should take care of the problem. However, if it does not, then you have to, after five minutes of taking the first nitroglycerin, if you have no relief, you take a second nitroglycerin. If by the second you are not having any relief, then you take a third after five minutes more. If you haven't had any relief of your chest pain after three nitros, five minutes apart on each one, then you need to be getting to the hospital because there's obviously something else going on that nitroglycerin alone cannot take care of. So that's why nitroglycerin is given to people that have this medical condition to enable them to open that vessel up as soon as possible because that is the priority. You don't want a clot or something to develop behind it, which is also a risk that you take if it's not opened right away. Certainly there is a lot to deal with in terms of chest pain. And I don't want to focus on everything here. I do have other videos available about heart failure and things of that sort. I will be doing one that is on uh, having a heart attack, myocardial infarction by itself. But I wanted to focus on this one first because this is one that people do not know about. And it is one that is not really discussed much in the literature. And the main thing I want to thank you for is your time because you could have spent a lot of places, spent a lot of time doing a lot of things, but you elected to be here and you elected to learn. And I want to let you know that I appreciate that very much. Then I want to also tell you that if you know somebody that has had a clean heart cath that they didn't find a problem or if you know somebody who has been told that they have large coronary arteries share this video with them because they may have this condition and not know it because if their symptoms resolved prior to them going to heart cath and the pain went away 
then the condition may have resolved before it was actually being able to see it on camera in heart cath. So it's something that you need to pass on to other people because this is a condition that if they do have it, they need to have nitroglycerin on hand. And of course, please check the dates of your nitroglycerin because they do expire. And make sure that you have a current bottle on hand because this will hit you out of the blue. And when it hits you out of the blue, you're kind of relieved if you know what the problem may be. Whereas if you have it for the first time, you're not sure what you're dealing with and it catches you off guard. And the worst thing that you can do is panic. But trying to remain calm when you are in an extreme amount of pain is something that's very difficult to do, especially when the pain is so bad that it literally takes your breath away and makes it difficult for you to breathe. And that's the one thing that you need to do is to breathe and make sure that you're trying to get your body the oxygen that it's screaming that it's being deprived of. So if you learn something, please like and subscribe and please do share this with anybody that may find it of help to them. Thank you. You guys have a great weekend and look for another presentation on the heart soon. Have a good one. Bye.